Hi, I'm Patty Ann Brown, and you are in the strategy room. Aides to President-elect Donald Trump say he's already following through on one campaign promise, his vow to institute a five-year lobbying ban for all departing members of Congress and their staffs, in addition to executive branch officials. Sure enough, the Trump team has now announced that all appointees will be asked to sign a form barring them from registering as a lobbyist for five years after leaving. And transition team members would be barred from lobbying about the issues they worked on for six months after their departure. So joining us now, Democratic strategist Christopher Hale and Republican strategist Frank McCarthy. Welcome to both of you. Thank Glad you for having us. Again. Well, the chief strategist of the Republican National Committee, Sean Spicer, uh, says the prohibition will help to ensure that people can't use government service to, quote, enrich themselves. Uh, in a recent interview on 60 Minutes, Trump said Washington is one big lobbyist and he wants to, quote, phase that out. Christopher, your thoughts? Well, you know, I think it's good that, that, uh, that uh, President-elect Trump is taking this step forward to uh, ban, ban his uh, future uh, administration officials from lobbying. But i got to say, I think there's two other issues that I think he needs to look at if he's serious about, quote, draining the swamp here in Washington, D.C. Um, I really w think the uh, President-elect needs to try harder to separate his business interests from, uh, from his future administration. I was concerned to hear this past week about possibly seeking some kind of security clearance for his children. This is information that is only given to the President of the United States and his top uh, officials. This is information that shouldn't be given to his children who are running his business. And the second thing is, let's look at those, let's look at those cabinet officials. Right now, the rumors that we see uh, for people coming forward have been part of the swamp. So if the President-elect is serious about draining the swamp, I think he needs to look at these two issues going forward. We are going to talk in a separate segment about uh, some of the uh, possible appointees. Uh, but back to the lobbying issue, uh, Vice President-elect Mike Pence is now in charge of the transition, replacing New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and Trump spokesman Jason Miller says Pence is quote making good on President-elect Trump's promise that we're not going to have lobbyists involved with the transition efforts and this is when we talk about draining the swamp this is one of the first steps so the bottom line is we're going to get the transition team where we need it to be uh, so Frank is this a sign that Trump will not tolerate corruption in his administration I think that's exactly what this sign is Betty Ann um, he ran on draining the swamp, and that's why people voted for him and voted against Hillary Clinton, is to, is to get rid of these uh, people who are lifetime lobbyists uh, who plan to go into an administration, tinker with some regulations that will be beneficial for some special interest, and then leave government office or government service to then go work for those special interests. Um, I think this is a fantastic idea. Mike Pence, a former congressman, former governor, understands and knows exactly how this system works. So he's trying to cut off the influence of those who are seeking to benefit from it and instead putting in place, putting in place people who I think want to do the job because they want to do the right thing for the country and help make America great again as outlined by Donald Trump. All right, well, RNC strategist Spicer did not explain exactly how this ban would be enforced. Uh, President Obama, at the start of his term, imposed a similar ban, barring officials from lobbying the executive branch until the end of his administration. But officials got around the rule. Uh, they simply didn't register as lobbyists, but they still exerted influence as lawyers or consultants. Christopher, is this enforceable? You know, um, I was a, a member of the Obama administration, and it gets difficult because the reality of it is some of the foremost experts um, on critical issues to the federal government are lobbyists. So I think we have to figure out, and I think uh, President-elect Trump has to figure out, how serious is, is he in this? Is he going to allow waivers like the previous administration did, or is he going to stick to his guns? I think um, as it gets down to the grittiness of governing, and let's remember that President-elect Trump is an outsider, and he didn't, establish, he didn't establish too many good relationships with insiders. So it's going to be a difficult uh, uh, mix between governing well and keeping special interests out. Mm. Uh, Obama's ban was imposed by executive order. Uh, without that, the New York Times says Trump can't put this ban in place without congressional approval, uh, which is a heavy lift, uh, given what Christopher was just saying, you know, how many former Congress members become lobbyists. Uh, the proposed ban is being applauded already by government ethics groups, but critics say it could discourage qualified people from serving in the Trump administration. So, Frank, how do you uh, resolve those issues? Well, I'll take the first piece about executive action, and you can 
issue an executive order until you're president. So let's wait until he is sworn in before he can uh, be criticized for not taking executive action. He's done the right thing in announcing this ban, and I'm sure he'll do uh, right by enforcing it and doing it in the proper way. And, and you're right to be concerned. Lobbyists uh, are usually hired by people or organizations to be subject matter experts on issues. And uh, you'll lose some of them, but I don't think uh, you'll lose. He's looking for people with private sector um, experience, people who know how these regulations work and impact businesses and working people. And that is what his focus is, is on. He's looking for people who have, uh, who were loyal to him, people who understand and know uh, businesses and people who are outside the box, outside of D, um, uh, D.C. And, and Capitol Hill and uh, to a great extent trying to steer away from the Wall Street types, which is why we hear names like Jeb Henschelink for Secretary of Treasury and Jim Renacci rather than some of the other uh, bigger names that are, were floated around in the media. All right. We'll see what happens. Christopher and Frank, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. And for complete political coverage, stay right here at foxnews.com. I'm Patty Ann Brown. Thanks for watching.